Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here with uh, so many wonderful, wonderful friends, colleagues, um, clients, and uh, uh, people, all of us, committed to the intention around lifelong learning and what that really means for each of us and how we need to um, clearly uh, move from good to great and believe that the leap is possible. So um, here we go. We've learned from a French novelist, Marcel Proust, that the real journey of discovery lies not in seeking new landscapes, but rather in having new eyes. And in fact, as we consider our journey into lifelong learning, it really is as much about inward reflection as it is about outward observation. It's about learning more and more about who we are, increasing our own self-awareness, increasing our own self-discovery, and that that is as important as any new skills we learn, any new knowledge that we acquire. And so, we, we want to begin with a, just a very simple definition of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the capacity to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions. That obviously requires self-awareness. And secondly, it's the capacity to recognize, understand, and influence the emotion of others. One of the things, though, that has been so compelling for us, when I say us, I mean our team and the leaders that we've worked with, is an appreciation of the science of the brain and what we can learn about who we are as human beings, no matter what age we are, and no matter what culture we come from. I took the liberty of asking a few young friends to help me prepare for this presentation. And so, I'd like to introduce you to Elise Sadler. Elise is in the fourth grade. So I asked Elise, tell me who your favorite teacher is and why. And this was her response. My teacher is really nice. He gives us candy. He's really funny. When I get the right answer, he puts my name on the smart board. He rides a motorcycle, and he wore a Star Wars t-shirt to school. You can tell he listens because he pays attention. He's really cool. So what we have learned from Elise about her teacher is that he's got great listening skills, that he has the capacity to make emotional connection, that he provides recognition for his students, that he uses humor, and these are competencies, characteristics of emotional intelligence. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to a young man who's 25 years old, and Alex, he's fondly known as Alex, is from uh, Africa, and Alex is studying, um, he, his intention is to become a physician and return to Africa to serve his people. When I asked him about his favorite professor and why, his response was, as an international student, there's a language barrier, and my biology professor makes sure I understand everything that's taught in class. He asks me for clarification to determine that I've understood the information, even if I'm not able to clearly communicate it on tests. I think this is unusual he said. It motivates students to learn. He cares what his students are learning. So you can certainly see that the, my young friends have one by one demonstrated for us that competencies around emotional intelligence, like the ones that Alex 
again identified as emotional connection, communication, empathy, coaching, and adaptability, are the kinds of qualities that are most impactful that we remember. Not one of those young people, as bright as they are, as academically successful as they are, not one of them said, my teacher is so smart. Not, not that they couldn't say that. Not one of them said, I learned so much about math, biology, um, sciences, right? So again, even at a very young age, we know intuitively that the competencies around emotional intelligence are key. They're key to our success and they're key to our learning.